Have you ever been to Universal Studios Islands of Adventure and been like, oh my gosh, this park is so freaking good. And then you walk across to the other park the next day and you're like, what happened here? My name is Drew Hastings and let's talk about that. So before we begin, I want to clarify the difference between Universal Studios Florida and Universal Studios Orlando, because there is a difference. So Universal Studios Florida is the park that features Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, Diagon Alley, Escape from Gringotts, all that sort of stuff. And Universal Studios Orlando is the resort. So the resort features Universal Studios Islands of Adventure, Universal Studios Florida, Uh, Volcano Bay and soon to be Epic Universe. So Orlando is all of it. Florida is just the one park. If you ask me, these should have been reversed. I think the naming is stupid, but what do I know? I'm not in charge here. So now the big question. Why is Islands of Adventure so much better? So there's multiple reasons, but I want to start with the layout. So if you look at the layout for Islands of Adventure, it's just a big circle. That's basically all there is to it. There's a few offshoots here and there, but for the most part, it's just a big circle and it's really honestly pretty easy to navigate. It's hard to get turned around in this park. And then if we look at the Florida park, you walk into what looks like a grid from the layout point of view. And this grid is like the city streets and it's pretty well themed in there. I think it's kind of cool. Um, There's some good photo opportunities in there, but there's not really any standout attractions in the beginning of the park besides Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, but I'll get to that in a second. So this front section of the park, it may be well themed, but it's pretty confusing to navigate because there's a lot of like back streets that you can take and it's like, I don't even know, pretty confusing. But then the back half of the park is a big old circle that goes around a lake and that's pretty easy to navigate for the most part. Um, It's still pretty easy to get lost. Um, The first time I went, I know we got lost. We went into the kids section, which we thought would lead up to something, but it was really just a big offshoot that we didn't really want to take. But we found ourselves there anyways. Another confusing part of this park is uh, Diagon Alley. And for someone who is their first time, that would be really easy to miss. Like they could just walk right by it, not even know that it's there. Um, And then within Diagon Alley, it's pretty cool. It's kind of easy to get turned around, partly because of the crowds and the buildings are kind of cramped and like, you really get the vibe of Harry Potter, which is awesome, but the layout is a little eh. And then not to mention Nocturne Alley, that is super easy to miss. I was waiting in line for Butterbeer when I happened to notice it, but for someone who is their first time, yeah, you're gonna miss it. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if people didn't even know that Harry Potter was at that park just because it was so easy to miss. But enough about the layout, let's talk about IP, because this is where things start to get really interesting. Let's head back over to Islands of Adventure, because when you think about this park, there are three intellectual properties that stick out above the rest those being Harry Potter, Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World, and Marvel. All three of these are super popular even to this day. And now if we look at popular IPs at the Florida Park, there's Harry Potter. And not really anything else that stands out. Maybe Minions, but Minions are getting a little outdated. Now I will mention that Islands of Adventure is not deprived of culturally relevant IPs. Like you look at the Cartoon Land and Seuss Landing, uh, no one really cares, you just kind of walk through those. So Islands of Adventure isn't exempt from this, but Islands of Adventure definitely has the better IP, which helps a lot to bring in crowds. And while we're talking about IPs, side note, I find it interesting that Disney owns the movie rights to certain intellectual properties like Marvel and The Simpsons, even though Universal has the attraction rights to use these in their park. I just thought this was interesting and I wanted to point it out. So not only does Islands of Adventure have better intellectual property 
and it has a better layout, but the attractions at Islands of Adventure are just better. If we look at the Florida park, almost all of their rides are screen based. So you have Jimmy Fallon, Shrek 4D, Minions Mayhem, Escape from Gringotts, even though that's a pretty good one, Simpsons The Ride, Fast and Furious, and Transformers. These are all very heavily screen based, even though Transformers and Escape from Gringotts are both pretty good rides. They do screens in a good way. And if we look at the screen based attractions at Islands of Adventure, there's Spider-Man, which is a great ride. Forbidden Journey is also a great ride. And then Kong, which I didn't ride, but based on the POV, that looks like an okay ride. But it does have some actual physical props in there, which I think just makes it stand out from the flight simulators and whatever else, 4D rides and stuff like that. And I will admit that both parks do have some really good dark rides. So there's E.T., even though the story's weird in that, Men in Black, Transformers, Gringotts, Cat in the Hat, that's also a weird one, but it's done well, Skull Island, Forbidden Journey, Jurassic Park, The Water Ride, Spider-Man, and The Mummy were the ones that I came up with, but all of these have really good theming, they have good use of physical props, which I think elevates a ride more than a screen-based ride. Now let's talk about the fun part, roller coasters. Let's look at the coaster lineup for each of these parks. So. The Florida Park has an okay coaster lineup. Their standout ride is Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, which is an okay coaster in my opinion. Maybe I'll make a review on it at some point. But it's just an okay ride, I think. Then you have Escape from Gringotts, which is definitely more of a dark ride than a roller coaster. You have The Mummy, which is a good blend of both an indoor coaster and a dark ride. And then there's Woody Woodpecker, which is a well-themed kitty coaster. I was, I wrote it and I had fun riding it, but it was okay. I mean, it's just a kitty coaster. And now if we look at the coaster lineup of Islands of Adventure, we have Velocicoaster, their newest coaster, which is probably their standout, but it's arguable between that or Hulk. Hulk is also a great ride. I think it's a great number two, in my opinion. And it's a great visual right when you walk in the park, you see the big green roller coaster looming in front of you. There's also Hagrid's, which has an amazing blend of thrilling roller coaster elements with amazing theming, and it's just an exciting ride all around. And then the kitty coaster is Flight of the Hippogriff, which is a really, really well themed kitty coaster. I liked the theming on this one as well, and how it's themed to Harry Potter. It, it's a cool one to ride, I thought. But in terms of roller coasters, Islands of Adventure has three big coasters, where the Florida Park only has one big coaster, one medium-sized, well-themed indoor coaster, and one that's definitely more of a dark ride. So there's kind of a big difference between the parks. So with all this being said, Islands of Adventure is just better. I don't know what Universal is doing with their Florida Park, but it's feeling outdated, their attractions aren't as good, the layout is kind of iffy, but that's something that would be very difficult to fix at this point. But the Florida Park is just not the same. It seems to lack the love and attention that Islands of Adventure gets. I would love to see a big new IP come to this park, the Florida Park, and have like a completely new land, maybe take out an old land and replace it with something else that just feels more culturally relevant. Because as it stands right now, that park is getting pretty outdated, the attractions are outdated. Like give me a big Intamin multi-launch coaster, or a big B&M, or even like a mock extreme spinning coaster, or something big that just stands out, that draws people in. Because as it stands right now, I don't think there's much to draw in the crowds at this park. So that's my opinion of Universal Orlando Resort. Do you agree or disagree with what I said, how the Florida Park is outdated, the attractions aren't as good? Is the Florida Park better than Islands of Adventure? And if you say yes, I'm going to think you're wrong, but I would love to hear your reasoning as to why. Um, so like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought of this video, I would really appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching, go live an enthused life, God bless.